All right, I apologize for the fan noise. Uh, last video, we got the um, we got the snake to move. Oh no, the two videos ago we got the snake to move. Last video we got it so that it's not just a never-ending snake. Uh, we erase the the piece of the snake that was uh, where we were before, and we draw a new snake. And then we made it so that we can move the snake around, and we made it so you can't double back on yourself. If you're going left, you can't go right, and because the snake's head would run into its body. So now let's uh, let's start making food. So let's uh, head over my code here. And let's see, uh, maybe food is the function that I've got. Let's come back down here, and that is in our tick function. And that comes before we do anything like this. So let's do maybe food. So we're maybe going to add some food. And the reason we're calling it maybe food is because, uh, where do we put this? Come around here is we might create food and we're gonna use math.random. So math is one of the built-in JavaScript libraries and it has a random function which is gonna return you a value between zero and one. And we're going to, um, uh, we have this chance food constant that we don't have to find yet. So let's go get that. Chance food. And you, the reason I'm putting this into a constant that's up at the top is part of the, um, I don't know, it's part of the sort of the, the configuration of the game is because I want to, um, I want to be able to um, change that instead of having a value here. Like I could just put, um, you know, if is food is created and this is really um, why change to, uh, why change, why is this uh, change to that? No. Why can't I do that? I'm, I'm, my memory is failing me. I should be able to say uh, in Vim, um, change until the um, semicolon, but I can't figure out how that works. So anyways, um, is food created? We're setting this to what I was going to do was do, was do this. This is, this is the expression here. Everything within the parentheses is... Um, is what is going to be set to is food created, and this less than or equal to is going to return a boolean value. So if this number between zero and one is less than chance for food, then we're going to say is food created is that value. So if it's uh, 0.5, right now we've got um, we've got chance of food is set to one, and so if random is set to less than, if random, every time you call random, you get a new random value. If it is less than or equal to 0 0.1, then we'll create, then we'll say is food created is true. If it's great, if it's greater than 0 0.1, then we won't create food. So one tenth of the time, roughly, we're going to create food. And then we say is food created. Now we could just put this expression, uh, we could just do yank at parentheses, and we could put that here, and we could delete that. We could just say that. If math.random is less than chance food, then do whatever this is. But then you're kind of left guessing what that means. Like, what does it mean that math.random is less than or equal to chance food? I'm going to leave these parentheses in here because even though um, the order of precedence means that this whole expression will be done before it's assigned, it's just clearer if I say I'm doing everything in the parentheses. And it's kind of like math where you do everything that's in the brackets first. So we say, is food created? Now that we have this in an expressive variable, and that should probably be like this. We should declare it with let. I can't remember what that does, but I think it's good. So um, uh, let is food created be equal to whether or not math random was less than or equal to chance food. And if is food created, that'll be a Boolean. So if it's true, then we're going to drop down in here and we're going to make a new x coordinate, a new y coordinate, and we're going to make them random. And it's a number between 0 and 1. But we don't want a decimal number like 0.1 or 0.65. We want this to be an integer number or like um, the equivalent, uh, you know, uh, the equivalent of an integer number, a, a floating point number or a decimal without anything after the decimal point. So we'll multiply the, by the number of cells we have. So if this is say we get, you know, if we have 20 cells and we get, you know, 0 0.1, then that will end up being, um, that'll be in a second cell. And then in case, we have anything left over, um, we're going to take math.floor. So that just um, makes sure you only get the, the integer part of the value. 
we're going to set that to our x. So this is how we get a random x and a random y that will fit on our board. We only want to get we want to we want to take we don't we don't have any decimal grid coordinates. We only have integer grid coordinates, and so we want to have we want to spread that randomness evenly over all of these. So what we can do is we can multiply the number of cells by a decimal and get some number. So if you take 0.5 of the number of cells, then we'll be somewhere in the middle. 0.1 will be over here. 0.9 will be over here. So that's what we're doing there. And then we maybe add food. So we better go get that function. Maybe add food. Maybe add food. Flip back over here and do that. So maybe add food, and what we're doing is we're passing it a point. This is an object. We've wrapped it in curly braces. We've given it an x field and assigned new x. We've given it a y field and assigned new y. And let's I'm gonna play with that just just so uh, we have an example of that. I can make any object. I can say var, you know, whatever, z equals, and I can give any fields. Foo, I can say is one. Um, bar is equal to, um, you know, abc, a string. And then um, baz is equal to another object, which has, you know, x is one. So we can make an object with any kind of values in it. And then we can say z.foo, that'll give us back one. We can say z.baz.x, and that'll give us back one. So you can see when we say z.baz, we get we get that object back. So uh, we can also put functions on there. We can and we can just assign things. We can say z dot my you know my function equals, and I think you can do anonymous function. I might screw this up here, but you could say like you know x, and you return you know x plus one. And now if we call z dot my function with one, we're going to get back two. So our object can have functions, it can have, you know, properties on it like these. So that's just showing that you can put all kinds of things in an object, you just make an object on the fly. Uh, so we've made an object, uh, which is a point, you know, it's an x, y coordinate. So we're calling maybe add food and we called that point. So here I've done another expressive variable says when we call maybe add food, it's going to have a point object that we're going to get and it's maybe add food because we might not be adding food and the reason for that and we're going to because if the snake is on the food we don't want to add a, a piece of food on the snake and we don't want to add food on top of existing food and so we figure out are we on is that point on a snake is that point on some food and if it's not on a snake and it's not on some food then we'll push um we'll push that food onto the food array. So what food array, you might ask? Well, apparently I created a food array so that I could figure out um, whether or not I'm on food. So I keep track of all the food. And then we'll also have a is on function uh, is on. So we have is on snake and is on food. Let's just get out of the bottom. So we have these is on functions, and the is on snake takes a point, and it says is on calls the is on function with that point and all of the parts of the snake. So let's do. Uh, we have an is on function. So is on. You can see that both is on snake and is on food are both calling is on and this gives it the array of food this gives it the array of snake parts so what is on does is takes a point and any list of elements and it says let's just get rid of this for now what it does is it says take all of those elements and we're going to call the find function on them and what do we do when we see a function we don't know we can whip over here and we can do mdn uh, let's just do array find and here we go, find. The find method returns the value of the first element in the provided array that satisfies the provided testing function. What does that mean? It means that if you provide a function that, that takes one of those things and then returns a Boolean, the first one that returns true will be returned into the whatever variable you say. So let's see what that looks like. So if what, what we're doing is worse, uh, this should be let. Actually, is that what they used? They use const. Yeah, actually, we'll use const too. 
Um, so we're declaring this maybe element variable and we're saying it e is equal to finding, and this is our, this is our um, function inside our parentheses here. This, it's a function that takes an element. So what it does is find will go through each of these elements and call your function with the first, with, with each of those elements. So we've just named it elem for element. And it goes to that element and it says, we have this point object here. And it says, take the x of the point and see if it's equal to the elements x. So all of these elements are expected to be objects that have x and y coordinates. So if our point x equals our element x and our point y equals our element y, then this point is actually equal to in the same place as one of these elements. And if it if we get, um, and then if we go back to our function up here, it says, if no values satisfy the testing function, undefined is returned. So if, none, if we went through all these elements and compared them, the elements x to point x and element y to point y, so we went through all of these elements and compared it to this point, if we didn't get anything, then maybe element will be undefined. So we returned if maybe element doesn't equal undefined. If maybe element doesn't equal undefined, it means we found something. That means one of the elements of whatever it was we're comparing to had that point. So in this case, we say, is this point on one of the snake parts? And if it is, then we know that it'll return true for is on snake. This point is on the snake. So let's go back to that. So when we go to add food with a point, we check, is it on the snake? And we'll find out if one of the elements in the snake has the same point. And we'll say, is it on the food? We'll go through all the points and say, um, is that point on any of those food? And if it is on the snake or any existing food, then we don't do it. We say if it's not on a snake and it's not on is food, then we'll do push. Remember push is used with an array. You put something onto the front of the array. So we're gonna push that point, that object with an X and Y value onto the food array. So now that we have food, so what? So what we gotta do is, we, let's see, we did our maybe food. And then when we did our, when we do our draw function, we're gonna have to draw that that food. So we're going to need a draw food function. All right, draw, draw snake. Let's draw the food after the snake. So there we go, draw food, and we're going to need that to do something. So let's do, oh, that was wrong. Draw food, draw board, draw vertical lines, draw snake, draw cell. Let's put it right here. Okay, so draw food. Now our snake, what we did was you go through each part of the snake and you map over that. And with this anonymous function for each part, you do, you call draw cell with that part, which is a point and the snake color. So now what we're doing was we're doing the exact same thing. We're saying it, for each food, we're gonna map this function over each food and each food is going to be a point and we're gonna call draw cell again with that point and the food color, but we don't have a food color yet. So let's go get our food color. I've chosen the food color to be green. So let's go up here, snake color, food color is green. And one nice thing about Vim is that well, probably a lot of editors, it'll actually change the color if you're editing a JavaScript file. You can see down at the bottom here, it says that it knows this file is a JavaScript file. So let's, we've saved that. Let's go back to our web page and we'll refresh. And now we should see, we've seen our, now we gotta um, put the focus in here. Otherwise I was hitting the keys and they weren't doing anything because I didn't have the focus. The focus was over here. Um, so let's go get some of this food. So we're drawing food, food is green, green means good. So we get the food, nothing happens. So maybe next video what we'll do is we'll see if we can eat the food and grow the snake.